everybody, welcome to Board Online, Board Offline. Today I'm gonna start a playthrough of Root. Now I'm gonna be doing a solo playthrough. I'm not gonna be using the solo rules included with the game. Instead, I'm gonna be using the solo rules created by the Better, Bro Better Bot Project, which I will link in the description below. It is over on Board Game Geek. Uh, I, I, I'm blanking on the guy's name right now, but basically he took it upon himself to create a better way to play Root Solo. I, I think the original Root Solo rules only use, mechan mechan or only use the Marquis de Cat, and it wasn't particularly satisfying from what I understood. And then I was listening to the Solo Source podcast, and they started talking about the Better Bot Project, which had made solo rules where you could use any of the base game uh, uh, factions in solo play, which I thought was very, very cool. And then I managed to get my, uh, my hands on root. Uh, Leader Games sent me a copy over, which I was very excited about. And I started trying out this Better Bot Project. I printed out the, you know, the, the print and play of it right there from Board Game Geek. And it's really a lot of fun. And so now with the Kickstarter that's going on right now, the Better Bot Project is actually being officially adopted or, or, or adapted, I guess I should say. And they are currently, you know, continuing to play test it, tweak it, develop it. And I'm sure that whatever version comes out with the, the uh, root board game from the Kickstarter that's currently up right now will be different in some ways than what you're gonna see here. But I, But hopefully what you see here will at least give you an idea of what you're going to be getting there. And I'm sure that, that you know, at minimum, the skeleton is here for what you're going to be getting there. But this works so well that, you know, I can't imagine it's going to be, you know, just so different that it's unrecognizable. But you know what? I'm going to be talking about a lot of this anyway once we get back down to the table. So let's just get down to the table and we're going to set up Root for a solo play. Hey everybody, real quick, I also wanna let you know before we get into the rest of the video about a contest going on for this t-shirt right here from Mr. Meeple. Check the link in the description below for the contest entry and you've got until about the end of March 2019 to get your entries in and hopefully you can win this t-shirt from Mr. Meeple. And if you haven't checked them out before, definitely go check out their website. It's pretty awesome. Okay, to the video. Okay, so as I mentioned up top, this is the Better Bot Project solo versions of the Mechanical Marquee, or the Marquee, which is called the Mechanical, mechanical Marquee for this one. The Eerie is the Electric Eerie, and then the uh, Vagabond is the Robot Raccoon, and then I'll be playing the Woodland Alliance. Um, now, just so you know, the, the Alliance, if, it's the, if you use the, the Better Bot Project version, is the Automated Alliance, but we're not using that one. No. Uh, we're gonna go right into the setup. Well, and let's look at this real quick. You see 25 warriors, six sawmills, workshops, and recruiters, one keep. You'll notice you don't use the wood as the mechanical marquee. Um, there, it, it, doesn't, it just doesn't come into play. Um, if y'all wanna pause, you can read the playing against. It's some pretty cool insights into how they'll work. Low complexity, aggression is moderate, crafting ability moderate, car wealth is non-existent, it doesn't matter. Okay, so. Set up first. We got to place our keep token in a random corner clearing. Here is the board, and we're gonna roll this to randomize it. A zero will be this clearing. Zero, one, two, and three. We got a zero, so the keep's gonna go up here. There we go. All right, so let's see what's next. Next up, we've got place one warrior in each clearing, except the corner clearing diagonally opposite from the keep. Add an additional warrior to the clearing with the keep token. So twelve. Warriors in total. So for any of you that don't know the story here, the, the Marquis basically are outsiders that came into the forest here and have pretty much taken over and their whole mindset is a very mechanically driven, industrial driven mindset. And they're going to, they're going to use the natural resources of this forest for their own wealth and their uh, you know, prosperity and power and all that stuff. All right, so step three for the mechanical marquee, place one sawmill, workshop, and recruiter randomly among the clearings adjacent to the keep token. All right, so I've just got um, one workshop, sawmill, and recruiter in here kind of randomly in my hand. So let's pull one out to put right here. And we've got, and, and ultimately, uh, these don't matter where they go quite as much as, um, it would in normal game. And you'll see that uh, as we play, the it's more about scoring victory points than it is, they don't actually produce anything in this game. Um, for instance, recruiting normally 
if you're playing a normal game of root, you can only recruit in clearings that have the recruiting station. However, in this one, it's you can recruit in any clearing that you control, or I'm sorry, the mechanical marquee can recruit in any clearing that they control. So uh, but you'll see how that works as we go along. And then finally, we have to uh, flip the board and fill your building track with sawmills, workshops, and So we'll just start putting these out on here. All right, and finally, of course, this will go on the zero of the victory point track. And don't forget, we've got all these warriors off to the side, ready to be recruited and utilized. All right, moving on to the Electric Erie. All right, we've got, again, if you want to pause it and read this, feel free. You see there's 20 warriors, seven roosts, no tokens, and then four leader cards and two uh, vizier cards. So first thing, place a uh, six warriors and one roost in the corner clearing diagonally opposite from the, the clearing with the keep. If the marquee is not playing, well, he is, so it doesn't matter. All right, so okay. obviously the keep's up here, which means the Eerie's gonna set up down here. So we'll put a roost right there. And then six warriors start the game for them. Uh, there we go, six warriors right there. And then next up, we flip your board and fill your roost track with roost, except for the leftmost space. And then place both uh, Vizier cards into the bird column of the decree. And also, so a little lore regarding the Eerie, essentially with them, the thing is at one point, they ruled the entire forest. This, the forest is their homeland. However, because of uh, you know various problems and power struggles within their own people, within, within their government, within their, you know, their civilization itself, they came to a point where they were sort of weakened, and in that moment of weakness, the mechanical marquee, or the marquee, the marquee, not the mechanical marquee, but the marquee swept in and have taken over the forest, taken the forest from them. So that's the deal with them, and now their whole goal is to retake what is rightfully theirs. All right, so you'll see I have this token right here. Uh, that's my, my seventh roost because my dog actually ate a roost. So I only have six regular ones and I use that blank white token. It was just an extra token that came in the box for my seventh. So that's what that is. It was a, it was a sad day. And then the victory point tracker goes down on zero. And we of course have all these guys waiting for their chance to get involved as well. All right, and finally with the Eerie, we need to put our loyal viziers under the bird column here. You, uh, anybody who's played root before will notice a pretty drastic change to what's up here, and we'll explain how that works as we go along. All right, now we've got the Woodland Alliance, who doesn't start on the board at all. They are uh, all off the board at the beginning. This is who I'm going to be playing. And these guys are basically the rebellion. They, they say, hey, you know what? The Eerie has always treated all of us poorly. They, you know, these are all the other um, forest animals. So the Eerie's always been an oppressive force. The Marquis aren't any better. We're going to rise up and we're going to fight against them. You've got 10 warriors. So you can see they have a lot fewer warriors than the Marquis or the Eerie. The three possible bases that I can put out, three buildings, and 10 uh, sympathy tokens is what I've got. No other pieces. High complexity, moderate aggression, crafting ability is high, and card wealth is moderate. So the only thing I have to do is flip my board and draw three cards, add them to my supporters, place my bases on their matching spaces on the base box, and fill the sympathy track with sympathy tokens. All right, victory point tracker goes out to zero. And we've got these 10 guys here waiting to get involved in the rebellion as well. Oh, let's don't forget to draw our three supporters. All right, so we've got uh, two foxes and a bird supporter. Now, normally these would be kept face down in a regular game, but obviously playing solo, I'll keep them face up easier that way. Next up, we've got the robot raccoon. So again, feel free to pause it and read about playing against the robot raccoon. So first thing we have to do is randomly select a character for the robot raccoon, and we will go with the ranger, whose ability is hideout. At the end of daylight, slip into the forest if more than two items are damaged. 
All right, so we'll return the rest of those possibilities to the box. Here, I'll see. Second, place your pawn in the forest A between clearing 10, 11, and 12 on the player board. So let's look here real quick. You can see here that forest A is here, and you'll also notice that they've actually split a couple of the forests in half, where normally all of this would be one forest. B and G is technically one forest on the board, but in this case, it's been split in half for the robot raccoon. Uh, but he will start here in clearing A, or I'm sorry, in forest A. So let's go and get him over there. So here he is right here in this forest. And you can see the spots that are split in half, by the way, are uh, the river is here to remind you of that. That's basically the, you can see up here, that little spot there, this river. And so wherever the river is, it's considered two different forests for the purposes of the uh, robot raccoon. I'm pretty positive that's not the way in the base game. I've only ever used him once. The the uh, I've only used the vagabond once in the regular game, uh, non you know non solo. Well, actually, even that was solo. It was me playing him, and that was the only time before this that I've used him, other than when I'm uh, practicing for this video. So. Let's see, what's next? We have number three here. Um, shuffle your quest deck and draw the top card, placing it into your play area. This is your active quest. All right, so here we go. We have quest card repair shed in a fox clearing. So for the robot raccoon, this stuff down here is not super important. It's going to be the type, the, uh, the suit basically, the fox suit is the important part of this quest. So next up, take the four ruins from the map and take the, uh, the sack, the boot, the hammer, and the sword ruin items marked with an R. Place a ruin on each item, shuffle them, and return them with an item, and return a ruin with an item to each ruin slot on the map marked with an R. So here you can see I've got the four ruins. I have put a random one of those items underneath it. And so I'm not gonna show you what it is. That way everybody will be surprised. I don't know what they are either. They're randomized. Let's put them out on the map and see. All right, so these go out on the regular ruin locations. You can, anybody hasn't played before, you can see there's an R here, 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 and here. And so those are ruins. These locations cannot be built on by any faction until the Vagabond has come and cleared the ruin. And then once he does that, and it opens the location up, which makes it interesting if you don't play with a Vagabond, then these ruins are just out there and cannot be built on for the entire game. All right, and then finally, flip your board and place your character card on your character card slot. Take four additional starting items, marked with the S, and put them in your satchel. All right, so here's the Ranger, goes right here. Uh, of course, our victory point marker goes out on the board. Everybody's on zero. Then we get four items into the satchel. Now, with the robot raccoon, the item, what the items are doesn't matter. Every action he does can be any item. So it's just the amount of items, and the more items he gets, the more powerful he becomes in combat as well. And you will see how that, you know, goes how that kind of evolves as we play the game. And for the lore of the Vagabond, essentially he's just kind of a, a lone guy out in the woods, uh, playing everybody against everybody. Uh, in it, when you're playing the, the regular game, he's making friends, he's forming alliances, backstabbing people, all this kind of stuff. And this one, it's more, he's out there, he's trading with people, he's also wreaking havoc and uh, becoming kind of a one-man army, which, which you'll see. I kind of like to think of him as anybody that's watched uh, uh, The Dark Knight, you know, with, uh, with the Joker, how Alfred's talking about that guy when he was in, you know, over in England, they were hunting some bandit or whatever in the forest. And finally, the way they decided to get rid of him was just to burn the forest down. Uh, and, you know, and, and that's where that whole quote, some men just like to watch the world burn. I, I like to think of the vagabond as kind of like that. He's just this guy that he's just there to sow chaos and, and rise from the ashes of the chaos. All right, so the board is completely set up. Last thing we gotta do is figure out who's gonna go first. We're gonna say uh, zero, Marquis, one, Eerie, three or two Woodland Alliance, which is me, and the Robot Raccoon will be three. So two, oh, so I get to go first, okay. And by the way, I forgot to draw my three cards. So I start with a hand of three cards and we've got here, so let's look. We've got Cobbler, on these cards, you've got the suit right here. Uh, then up here shows you if you wanna craft whatever the ability is or the item is. 
in this case it's an ability, it shows you here I'll need to control, or not control, I'll need to have, in my case, sympathy tokens in two rabbit clearings. Everybody has their own method for, for uh, crafting. In, in, in my case, it's my sympathy tokens. So in two rabbit clearings, if I had two rabbit clearings with sympathy tokens, I could do cobbler at the start of evening, make a move. So this would actually be one where I, this would be a consistent ability. Once I craft it, then I could start, I could have this out and, and, and uh, be able to use it because it doesn't say to discard. I'm pretty sure this is one that just stays in play. And from that point forward, uh, at the start of the evening, I could make a move, which could be pretty uh, useful, especially if I managed to get that earlier in the game. I've got a fox one here, but you can see here it has the mouse because it needs a mouse clearing. And then if I have one mouse clearing with a sympathy token, then I can craft root T and basically I'll get this item from up here at the top of the board. Let me show you that. Up here we have a bunch of craftable items that nobody has right now. So if I crafted the root T, I would get this T uh, item and gain two victory points. And then I would discard the card. And, and but the, the T itself doesn't do anything for me. It's mainly the idea here is I'm getting the victory points, but then I'm also opening myself up for the Vagabond coming up and purchasing that off of me. And then the other thing I've got, I've got a, a mouse suit with, if I was control one, if I have a sympathy token in one mouse clearing, then code breakers once in daylight may look at another player's hand. So this one's not gonna do me a whole lot of good in the, this ability. is isn't gonna do me a whole lot of good in the solo game because the, uh, the, so, the bots don't have hands of cards. So this one almost certainly I'll end up using for other purposes, you know, just the suit itself. And there's a few, a, several cards in here that you'll see where the suit itself is really what I'm gonna focus on, especially when playing solo. So there you go, that's our setup of Root. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to come back when we start our gameplay. I think I could fit all of this into one video or you know one uh, additional part, uh, the entire gameplay section. Uh, I don't think it's gonna go you know, over 45 minutes. I, I try to break them up about like that. So we should be able to get it all in one more part. Come back and check it out, we'll find out. And until next time, if you're bored online, bored offline.